What up? And well met. This is Muscle and Magica, and you, my friend, just accepted a quest. We'll all be pleased to know that I will, in fact, be getting a haircut tomorrow, so you can stop with the death threats. Ladies, you may continue the marriage proposals, and gentlemen, stop with the marriage proposals. Y'all been doing pretty good work on these quests, except for you. You need to step it up. So, I thought we'd take a little break and stock up on some provisions. But you know me. I can't help but fight misinformation anywhere I go. I think it's a mulatto racial trait. So rather than wasting your time with the foods you already know you should be eating for weight loss, like fruits and vegetables and lean meats, I figured I'd present to you five foods that actually go against conventional dieting wisdom in favor of imparting to you some mulatto wisdom. So, clear your bag space, and let's go. If you've been following along, then you know by now that there are no magic foods, except for my mom's sweet potato casserole. I will fight you. If you want to lose weight, you need for your calorie input to be less than your calorie export. Now, if you're tracking your calories, then that's fairly simple. However, there are some foods that make it a little bit easier than others. Never go full potato. Unless you're dieting. Potatoes have gotten a bad rap over the years because they contain starch and because they're not the lowest food on the glycemic index. Now, the glycemic index is going to get a video of its own, but suffice it to say for right now that it's an outdated, antiquated system that should have absolutely no bearing on your life unless you're diabetic. And even then, it's probably not as relevant as you think. What is relevant is the satiety index, which is a ranking of foods based on how they satisfy hunger. And guess who's at the top of that list? I'm not going to eat this raw. Number two. Now, I wouldn't actually put rice on the list because personally I don't find rice to be very filling, but white rice, apart from the fact that you lose a little bit of micronutrient value and a little bit of fiber from the processing, actually has almost exactly the same stats as brown rice. Which leads me to my actual point. A funny thing happens when people start dieting. They tend to go out and buy all kinds of new and different foods that they absolutely and thoroughly hate, like brown rice. I'm absolutely astounded by the number of times I hear people complaining about the foods they have to eat on their diets. If you don't like brown rice or oatmeal or anything else, don't eat it. And if you want to know what you should eat, well, this video is a pretty good place to start, but the short answer is you can eat really anything you like, particularly if you're tracking your calories. Number three. Okay, at this point, you're probably thinking that I'm just trying to get you to gain weight so that I will appear leaner. And while I wouldn't put that past myself, just hear me out. You're correct in thinking that most breakfast cereals are full of sugar and probably aren't going to keep you full for very long. The trick is in finding the ones that are light and airy and give you more volume for less calories and take up more room in your stomach. Now listen, I'm a devout worshipper of the holy trifecta of breakfast cereals. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Reese's Puffs, and Captain Crunch Crunch Berries. But if you need some more volume, I suggest Kix, maybe Pops, or any puffed wheat cereal like Golden Crisp or Honey Smacks. And again, it wouldn't be so much of an issue if you were tracking your... Okay, I think you get the point. Back in the time before people thought carbs were bad for you, we used to think fat was bad for you. So we created a whole host of different fat-free foods. Now since then, we've come to realize, obviously, that fat is not only not bad for you, but it's in fact vital for a whole host of different reasons. However, when you're cutting calories, you only have three macronutrients to choose from, so sooner or later, chances are fat's going to take a hit. And when it does, fat-free dairy allows you to pretend you're eating tasty things even when you're really not. So you get to have your cheese and eat it too. But it's not really cheese. And finally, the secret weapon. Pickles. Okay, chances are nobody's told you that you shouldn't be eating pickles, except for maybe Peter Piper, selfish little bastard. What? Clearly his parents aren't married. If they were, he wouldn't be in other people's garden stealing their produce. Now to be honest, I hate the taste of pickles. In fact, I don't even like the consistency very much. But when you're about to go to bed hungry because it's the end of the day and you're all out of calories, nothing tells your stomach, shut the hell up, I'm trying to get lean, quite like a pickle does. The real question here I want to know is, how is it that the peppers were already pickled if Peter Piper is just now picking them? I mean, isn't that like an extensive process that happens well after the peppers have been picked? Anyway, I hope you gained some experience points from that. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any particular foods that you like eating during a cut, whether conventional or unconventional. And as always, if you want to come along with me on future quests, make sure you subscribe to the channel and join my party. Until next time, you lot of rants, log out. Guess who happens to be at the top of that list?